Welcome to Unsolicited Advice, where four of the brightest B2B minds pick one website and serve up our unique brand of insight and advice, whether you wanted it or not. Today, we are going to take care of a new unsolicited victim, and it's Hoovers.com. Now, these guys say they sell business information. They sell trends, reports, data on 85 million companies. You should go check out Hoovers.com. And today, we're going to sit down with our favorite B2B bandits and our published authors. Uh, we're about to head to Content Marketing World for Unsolicited's uh, after party, which we're really excited about. So yeah. let's get it on. That's right, with some competitive of consulting. So let's start off with Josh. What, Josh, what's your first word when you look at, at uh, Hoovers.com? Well, Drew, when I look at Hoovers.com, the first word that comes to my mind is plastic. Um, everything from the stock photo to the harassing live chat window um, just feels a little bit too robotic and too fake for my tastes. So robotic, fake, and plastic. I can see that. I can definitely see that. All right, Brian, you're up. Brian is the author of Your Customer Creation Equation. Uh, Brian, what do you got to say? What's your first word? My first word is business porn. <laughs> of all the pictures they could put on their homepage, why did they choose this Barbie doll girl? What are they trying to say? What sort of emotion are they just trying to elicit from the crowd? And you have to wonder, uh, what is she looking at? It's a good idea to, if you're going to use photography, to have them look at the call to action, but she's kind of looking off into space. So I don't know what this is all about. I, I, I imagine that this image is not working for them. <laughs> Plastic and business porn we've got so far. I love it. All right, Todd. Todd's joining us as well. Todd, Todd wrote the book, uh, Marketing Guide to SlideShare, and I don't know where he is. Last time he was in Turkey. Todd, what's your first word when you look at Hoovers.com? I'm in Paris today, Andrew. Great to see you. My first word, and I've got to be honest, Brian reminded me with his comment about business porn because I, I mistakenly thought we were doing Hooters.com. <laughs> spent quite a lot of time last night researching that one. <laughs> but I did manage to recover just now, and so I've looked up I've looked up Hoovers, and I tend to agree. I think tone is my word here. I just want to pull down their tie and ruffle their hair. You know, even where they have case studies where they're real clients, and dramatized stories where they have quite a bit of humour, the voice of Hoovers always appears as this sort of smug infomercial who knows everything and cannot be wrong. There's no humanity. They're just awesome all the time. And I think they need to downplay that and get a bit of real people action in there. All right, all right Todd. So you're fitting in right with, with Josh uh, when it comes to plasticky. You, but you mean it in the tone of voice. I love it. Um, all right. My first word today is simplify. I, I think there are too many big ideas, even on this homepage, for me to grasp and understand. I'm not sure what Hoovers.com actually sells. Do they sell integration? Integration with what? They sell email lists, email lists of who? They sell data of all kinds. They sell subscriptions. Subscriptions to what? I, I feel like if they just gave me one simple entry points, one thing to try so that I can slowly learn what they do, I'd, I'd be much better off. So, so far we got Josh with plastic, we got Brian with business porn, we got uh, t Todd with the, the kind of upgraded tone, I say simplify, and now it's time to award some quick points in our first round of first word today. And I think Josh, uh, Josh and Todd, you guys are on the same page, I'm giving you both 50 points for that. Uh, Brian, I love business porn, I think that's hilarious, I know it's from your book and I think it's a great idea and a great concept and more companies could uh, leverage this. So I'm giving you 100 points and I'm taking, yeah. I'm taking 10 points because uh, I'm a simple guy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, so Brian, you win this segment. We're, we're going to uh, move right on to our second segment, Low Hanging Fruit. All right, it's time for some low-hanging fruit. It's the one thing that Hoovers.com should do right now to fix their website. It's something really easy, something really simple. Brian comes into the segment with 100 points. So, Brian, you kick it off. What's your low-hanging fruit? So, my low-hanging fruit is distraction. The money page for Hoovers, as it turns out, once you dig in and figure this out, is their search results page. So, if I put a company name in there, they really can't give me a lot of great information on it. But on the search results page, I've got all these distractions. I mean, look at it. They've got they got ads at the top of the thing for companies that don't do anything like what they do. They've got this bar at the bottom offering a free ebook, uh, and then they've got these uh, these pop-ups floating around like a disembodied ghost uh, all over the page. So uh, it's hard for me to really focus on what they want me to do, which is click the buy a report page on a company that I'm interested in doing research for. It's too distracting. They got to figure out 
what business they're in and what website they're running. Yeah, I totally agree. If they're in the buy reports business, make it say buy reports. As I think you're dead on. All right, Todd, you're up next uh, since you're tied with Josh right now with 50 points. Todd, what's your low-hanging fruit? Yeah, I've got a few, and I agree with that that uh, little chat window that chases around the page. That is, It just annoys the hell out of me. It's... Uh, it's so disrespectful. I, I can't believe that they're, they're still trying to still trying to do it. With regards to um, their, some of their key landing pages, um, they've got Google AdWords. I mean, this is like it feels like a mummy bloggers site when you have that sort of thing there. It's just embarrassing. They should get rid of that. They've got some excellent content. This company they really do publish a lot of content on some parallel portals to this, specific to uh, more corporate markets and the small business market. That's the stuff I think that should be front and center on this site. There's um, a huge team of researchers and analysts and people who are constantly um, tracking bi the business community. That's the legitimate stuff that they should be bringing here that can show us why they're a real player in this space and will have the most up-to-date records in that. So, that's my words. Those are good words. <laughs> I, I think words. we should. <laughs> no, they definitely should get rid of the iron words. Totally agreed. And I, they do have great content. In fact, their infographic uh, is really uh, spectacular this month. All right, Josh, you're up. What's their low hanging fruit? What do you got today? All right. Well, I'd say the low hanging fruit here is for Hoover's to take a little bit of their own medicine. Uh, we've, they've got their tagline on the site is we make it easier which is sort of ironic because I think it's very difficult to find much of anything on this site, let alone know what they do. Um, Amen. One, <laughs> yeah, one exception to that is the small business page. I think they've done a pretty decent job of making it very simple to show here the three options that you have as a small business owner, and it's pretty clear. So I think if they applied that same uh, design restraint to the rest of the site, I think they'd be doing a lot better. Who's the girl on that page is my <laughs> More business porn from Brian Massey, who can spot it a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> She's got those smoky eyes staring into you. <laughs> this, that's great. All right, <laughs> my low-hanging fruit, I got. I, it's already been mentioned, but we got to get rid of that stupid chat box. It chases you around the page. It's a complete distraction. I had to close it like 23 times. I think it's terrible. You know what I love about it is every time you mouse over it, the broccoli appears again. So <laughs> it associates Hoover's, contacting Hoover's with eating broccoli. It's very, very powerful. Well, Brian, I know you think that uh, this stuff probably works for them if they're still using it. But I think, I think it's... I think it's total crap, and uh, I think they got to get rid of it. I, I hit uh, the chat button accidentally four times when I was trying to close the damn window. So it may work, but it's pretty bad. All right, I'm actually going to give my points to Josh. Uh, 250 points for Josh because he found the only usable content on the whole yeah, website. So Josh, nice. you, you win low-hanging fruit uh, today. All right, let's, let's move on to competitive advantage. Here we go. Here we go with competitive advantage. Todd is in the lead. Now, Todd, your job is to pick one site that's a competitor to Hoovers.com and tell us what you like about it, what makes it work that Hoovers could learn from. So, Todd, what'd you find? Am I in the lead? I, I think you are. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you won the last round. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually, I struggled to find a legitimate competitor in this space um, whose site I liked. So, I actually chose... Um, Hoover's own business-oriented blog website, which is called, called Bismology. It has a more senior target than Hoover's general site, but I think it, uh, what I want to point out is the difference in tone here. Bismology has a very professional business-oriented tone. It's, if you look at their social channels, so both of their Facebook accounts, Hoover's versus Bismology's, um, the Hoover's one is it's just trying too many cheap tricks. You know, it's very hard when, when a B2B company is on Facebook trying to work out how to get engagement. Um, and often just to get, try to get some sort of response from people, they end up posting stuff that's very irrelevant to their brand, which is kind of the opposite of what the research says to do. And I kid you not, on this on the Hoover's Facebook account, there's cats again. In fact, I quote some of the characters from, uh, from their recent posting. They include Lulu, the marketing cat. Snookums, the sales cat. Gerald, the entrepreneurial giraffe. He's hilarious. Meatloaf, the marketing pup. So cute. And Owen, the marketing orangutan. He's a gorgeous little guy, as you can see here. I mean, this stuff just has no place here. They need to get some consistency between um, their brand and their positioning. And that sort of messaging just sends it in totally the wrong direction. I used to read stories about them to my children. The Alpha Pets, really. The Alpha Pets, great. Are you serious about those times? I'm serious. 
They're all two weeks in a row. We get cats and and kids animals. All right, uh, I'm not. I don't even know what to say about points with that. So I'm I'm gonna move right along to Josh. Josh, what, who'd you find for your competitive advantage, and, and what could Hoover's learn from him? You know, Todd's really setting the bar high here with all of his cat references for the next episode. He always wins with the cats. I'm Low allergic to cats. Fruit. So what I found was Info USA. Now, Info USA, uh, upon a second click, is a pretty thin website, and there's not a lot going on there. But what I liked about it that I think Hoover's could pick up and use easily is um, from the homepage of Info USA. There are two main tabs: find mailing lists and leads, and create a marketing campaign. Um, and when I get to Hoover's homepage, I see "Make us your partner." We make your work easier and Barbie. So um, I'm not really <laughs> sure what message they're trying to send, but Info USA is very clear, very straightforward, and I definitely like that. Something they could pick up and apply to their site. Info USA does seem to have it right. It does, it lo does look a lot more simple. All right, Brian, you are up. I'm always excited to hear who you've uh, chosen for competitive advantage. Uh, well, I tell you what, I had trouble finding a direct competitor as well. I don't know if that. That I did find some direct competitors, but none that were any better, different, but not not working. So there's an opportunity here in this space. I, uh, so I went and looked at Jigsaw. I know a few of my uh, sales buddies uh, use Jigsaw to do research on folks when they're uh, uh, trying to do business development with companies. Uh, there was uh, purchased by Salesforce recently. They're part of Salesforce data. But if you have a question about what to do on the homepage, here's an excellent example. Put a picture of a somebody representative of your target, in this case a small business person, and put a little testimony with them. Now, this guy here in the um, Argyle cardigan sweater isn't, isn't nearly as cute as Barbie over on Hoover's, but I'm going to relate to him more, and he's got something to say that's going to make me stop and think, ah, oh, I'd check these guys out. If Bruford here likes them, maybe I'll like them too. <laughs> Uh, all right, you get 25 points just for using Bruford. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I found I did find someone. I didn't have that that hard of a time. I don't know why what I was searching for when I found it, but I found InsideView.com. You can go check it out. Um, now these guys have the things Todd was talking about in the very beginning. They have some personality. Their tagline is basically all the information legal to have. Um, they they actually talk about doing business with people instead of doing business with businesses, and they have all that data behind them. They have two easy tabs to understand, like what, what is it and how can you use it, uh, or essentially they're easy tabs on their homepage, similar to what Josh said. So I think Inside View uh, is a great example of what Hoover's could do to make their product simple and, and more easily accessible and understandable. Uh, so that, that was my take on it, InsideView.com, uh, which is a Salesforce partner as well. So Salesforce has come up a bunch uh, today as well and as Andrew, cats. Andrew? The picture on uh, of the girl on the last box here that says product demo, that is the exact image that I used in my book as an example of business porn. <laughs> of business That's porn. the exact image. <laughs> there it is. Well, look, business porn is obviously pervasive. And I'm going to give myself <laughs> a thousand points for inside view because I found someone that was unique in the marketplace, someone that seemed like they're a direct competitor of Hoover's. But... Business porn is so prolific. I think the lesson we can all take away from today is that there is actually no one that looks trustworthy in this space when it comes to, to big data for, for sales leads. I actually think it's a tremendous opportunity. Hoover's looks plastic. Uh, you know, uh, Inside View doesn't necessarily look trustworthy either. Info USA looks pretty thin when it comes to content. And, and Todd, you had to reach for uh, the, the you know, the blog version of Hoover's content. So look, if you were in the marketplace today, I think you should revise and refine your website to look authentic and trustworthy. And I think you'd beat these guys at their own game. So that's, that's today's episode of Unsolicited Advice. Todd, Josh, Brian, thanks so much for tuning in again. And we'll see you next week when we'll pick somebody else and rip them apart uh, whether they wanted or yeah. Oh, I won. I gave myself a thousand points. What are you kidding? Wait, with, without any cat reference or fancy accent? No, I had really good business advice. I'll see you guys at Content Marketing World next week or the week after. Have a great, uh, have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Bye.